Hello everyone, welcome to the first session of uh, Easy Dharma for the New Normal. For those of you who are joining for the first time and haven't seen our previous sessions, um, every Tuesday I'll be uh, doing a live stream here on the Kachara Facebook page and every Wednesday Pastor David will be doing a live stream as well at the same time of 9 p.m. So let me just refresh my screen to see who's joined us online today. I hope everyone's had a good session with Pastor Gim Lee, who's just finished the swift reincarnation uh, prayer for His Eminence Semarimbuchi in Kachara House. Let's see who's online. Okay, so before we get into it, my screen is still loading. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is actually, I'm going to be carrying on the topic of the, um, the six perfections. So I see that David Chu is online. Good evening. And uh, Wei Ting is also online. Sharon Ong, Pastor Tap Ming. Hello, Sharon. Um, there's more people online. Pastor Hani is online. Pastor David's also online. Phoebe Young is here as well. Thank you for joining this evening. And uh, Ramesh is here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go straight into it because it is quite late already. So I won't take up that much time doing a recap of what I've been talking about in the previous two sessions. So I'll just get into today's topic. Uh, more people have come online. Uh, Gillian Lin, good evening to you. Jacinta, the new normal sharing. Yes, it is. It's the new normal sharing. And um, Kwame Ming is also online as well. Good evening. And Suk. Suk Chu as well. Good evening. And um, oh, Yiling is also online. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. So today's session, I'm going to be talking about the third of the six perfections, which is patience. So the six perfections, just to recap what they are, the first is generosity. The second is uh, discipline, which I covered in the last session. The third is patience, which I'll be doing today. The fourth is joyous effort. The fifth is meditative concentration. And the sixth is wisdom. So these are the six perfections that we know within Tibetan Buddhism. And in fact, Mahayana Buddhism also talks about the six perfections as well. And it's one of the um, main things that we should practice throughout our daily lives in order to practice Buddhism and transform ourselves to become better people. So today is, um, what is it today? Patience, yes. Okay, now the word in uh, Sanskrit is kshanti. Now the word actually translates as patience, but it actually has a more deeper meaning. Um, its um, meaning is quite subtle. It also means a, a sense of peace and a sense of ease as well but it is one that is it's a type of patience that is kind of like a rock you can't be moved from it and that is indicative of what we actually need to reach we need to reach that point where nothing can basically unbalance us from our patience now as with the other um, perfections that i've already talked about this again can be um, divided into three categories. So three categories in which we can learn how to be patient or more in fact, how we should practice patience and how we can turn everyday experiences into um, ways in which to practice patience. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So I've seen some other people join as well. Lin Man is, is online and Cynthia as well. Esther Go says, good evening. Good evening to you. And Pastor Antoinette is online as well. Thank you very much for joining today's session. So I'm going to get into talking about patience. Now, the first category of patience is what is termed as, in the Lam Rim, um, is termed as dealing with attackers. So dealing with people who attack you. Now, when I say the word attack, you're going to think of someone coming at you physically, 
you know, they're, they're coming at you, they, they want to injure you physically. But actually the word attacker is actually more subtle than that. It is actually talking about, I mean, it's quite obvious that when you're, you're you know, you're attacked or somebody slanders you or somebody says something negative about you, you, you automatically rear up and you go, why are you talking to, about, why are you talking like that about me? Like that. So you have this knee-jerk emotional reaction to it. And this emotional reaction is because it actually comes from a sense of ego, coupled with ignorance. Ignorance in seeing how things work, basically. I won't get into that today. Um, but it will be something I cover on when I'm talking about the, the sixth perfection. But when we have this knee-jerk emotional reaction, we tend to react and we react without usually thinking. We react in a way that we, we, we don't really think about what our actions will do and the results of our actions. All we do is we know that we need to react. We have this strong urge from inside that we need to defend ourselves and then we just rush headlong into it and we do it. And usually this knee-jerk reaction that we have is a form of anger. So in this case, the practice of patience is actually a direct counter to anger when you have patience. So this, I wanted to share a story with you all, which, was, which is mentioned in the Lamrim. Now, if you remember back to my session about the demigods and the gods, you remember me saying that the demigods always wage war on the gods because they're jealous of what the gods have. So one day there was this powerful demigod and he rallied the entire realm into an army. And using that army, he attacked heaven because all he could think about was getting to the heavens and living the life of a god, enjoying himself and having all of his friends and his family around him and everybody was going to enjoy themselves. And all they had to do was to take over the heavens. So obviously the gods, they're not going to have, they weren't going to have it. The, the heavens are their home. The heavens are where, where they live. So the king of the gods, his name is Chakra, also known as Indra, okay? He gathered his army of gods and he went and, and did battle with the, with the demigods. And Indra, or Chakra as he's known, he doesn't ride a chariot. I mean, you... you most of the gods always have ride on chariots or various flying things like animals or they have vehicles as they call them with which they fly into battle. Indra has an elephant and Indra's elephant name is Airavat, okay? And he's a huge giant elephant with six tusks, okay? Three on either side. But he's so big and so ruthless in battle that Indra cannot do battle and steer his elephant at the same time. So he has another god sit on top of the elephant with him. And this god steers the elephant while Indra does battle from, from the back of the elephant. And when they were all preparing for war, when the gods were preparing for war, a lot of them were, were getting themselves into this battle frenzy. They were getting themselves angry. How dare the demigods come and attack us? How dare they try and take what is ours? Heavens, the heavens belong to us. We don't, we're not going to let them take what is ours. But Indra, he was quite calm and composed. And he basically said, okay, we have to go and do battle with the, the demigods because they're trying to overtake the heavens and he was very calm he was very collected about it so he got on top of the elephant and the other god who i'm going to call the charioteer in lack of a better word 
got on top of the elephant as well and they rode into battle and the battle was fierce and it was brutal and at the end of it the gods were victorious then they all came back to heaven okay to the heavens and Indra again sat back on his throne and he, all the gods were enjoying themselves. And the charioteer comes up to Indra and asks him, why, you know, th this, is a, this is a good moment. We, we, we protected the heavens from the demigods. And why aren't you, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you happy about it? You, 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 didn't, you weren't angry at the beginning and now you're not celebrating that you've won the... the the, the, the battle. And then Indra says to his charioteer, the demigods were actually, um, they were overcome by their jealousy. And I knew that they were overcome by their jealousy, but I kind of waited. I didn't do anything about it. I knew they were going to attack heaven, but I, I didn't do anything about it. I knew they were jealous. So he said, so the charioteer said, why didn't you do anything? Why didn't you do anything about it? Why didn't you get angry? Why aren't you celebrating now? And Indra replied, because I have patience, because I knew that, the per that this particular demon in what he was, not demon, demigod, was doing was for, from his jealousy. So that's why I didn't get angry. I was practicing patience. But on the other hand, I had to protect the heavens because the gods have certain responsibilities in the universe, which is to govern over the way things work. Um, and uh, basically rule over certain form, certain places in existence. And if the, the demigods had taken over heavens, that would have fallen to chaos. And there would have been chaos within, within the universe. So I didn't have a choice. It's not that I didn't want, I mean, I didn't have a choice to go to battle, but I would have preferred to practice patience. Now, why am I telling you about a god and the gods and, and the, the, the exchanges between the charioteer and the god Indra? Because it is one of the main examples that the Buddha actually used in order to teach patience. This was an example. I can't remember the name of the sutra. If I remember it, I'll post it on the comments. Um, this was an example that the Buddha used to show somebody who has patience. Okay. In this case, Indra had patience with the demigod because he understood that the person who, who was attacking him was doing so out of a negative mind frame. This negative mind frame was jealousy. So when we are talking about patience, it is when we have patience, when we realize that the person that is attacking us is actually under the influence of their own karma, is under the influence of their own negative delusions. Okay, it can be any sort of negative um, emotional response that they have that can lead them to get angry that can lead them to attack us this is the true meaning of having patience it is the understanding that the person coming at you is doing so from a negative angle so this is why it is again once again extremely important to understand the here we go again, the Four Noble Truths and the Law of Karma. When we have a good grasping of that, and then when we come to the higher teachings, such as the Six Perfections, when we think about it, it is easier for us to actually implement in daily life because we have that firm understanding of the Four Noble Truths and the way that karma works, the way that delusions work. So how do you actually go about doing it? Okay, Patience is basically not allowing emotional response, not having an emotional response when somebody attacks you. Now, this is something that is not easy for most of us. It is not something that comes naturally. 
That is why within Buddhism, we always say, learn the Dharma and then implement it. Learn and then implement it. If you learn something and you know the benefits of doing it, it's going to be easier for you to implement in your life. So what are the benefits of actually practicing patience? The benefits of practicing patience is you stop yourself from doing something that will lead to negative karma, which will actually lead to negative results in the future for yourself. And at the same time, for the person attacking you, because you don't give them a response, excuse me, you don't give them anything to continue their fight with, you also help to stop them from creating that same negative karma that can lead to negative results. So this is in effect the patience of dealing with attackers. Okay. Again, if anybody's got any questions, please do ask. I will answer. I don't see any questions yet. Now, this is on an outer level. Okay. This is when we usually think about, oh, you know, there's this there's this person at work and we're always arguing. Yeah, we, we, we want the same promotion. We want the same job. We want to, we're, we're, you know, we're doing the exact same thing and you just, we just want to look better than them. And then, and they want to look better than us. And then, you know, they slander you or said you did that or say you didn't do that or, you know, whatever. But patience, especially in, in this case, actually is more than just that. Patience also needs to be applied in daily life with the people we live with, with our friends and with the colleagues that we actually get along with. Now, one of the things that we as, um, I'll give an example of this. And this is an example that every single one of you, I think from the names that are popping up on my screen that are watching this, you will all understand this one. Every single one of you. I had a conversation earlier on with a parent. And this particular parent is having very strong um, difficulties with her teenage son. And... In this particular case, what I kind of suggested was to practice patience. Now, she didn't understand, the parent didn't understand what I was talking about. You see, we can have emotional reactions and we can be attacked by our enemies, but we can also be attacked by our family, our friends, but not in the way that you probably think about it. Now, within Asian culture, and by Asian, I mean anybody from Asia, basically, okay, whether you're Indian, whether you're Chinese, or whatever, there is a strong culture in which parents kind of force their children to do well in school, um, get a good education, get an education in a field which will likely make a lot of money or that the parents would hope the child makes a lot of money, then get a good job, then have a family, settle down, have kids, then you're going to be happy. That is kind of like the traditional ideal of what life should be like within, within Asian cultures, whether it's Indian, whether it's Chinese, whatever. So at this point in time, what this parent was doing is she was forcing her ideals of how she thought, of what she thought would bring her son happiness onto the son. So basically the son wanted to go into, he, he's very musically talented. So he wanted to go into uh, music. He wanted to study music and he wanted to make music he wanted to make a career out of being a musician. But obviously his mother didn't approve of that because she wanted him to go into the medical field because he was also okay in sciences. So she wanted to go, him to go into the medical field and from the medical field, get a job as a, as a doctor and then make a lot of money. This is her words. And then 
um, have, a, have a good life, have a good house, and then settle down and have a family. So what was happening at the moment is because the sons, um, what is the word? Ambitions were different from his mother's expectations of what he should be doing. This was creating a lot of friction within the family. And especially because we, we, we are coming out of MCO, they were in the house together and it was creating a lot of tension. Now, she was, they both had their own opinions. But what they didn't do is they didn't have the patience to actually understand each other. So patience is more than just dealing with people who attack you. Patience is also about understanding. It is also about understanding where a person comes from without already having your own expectations and also emotional reactions when you don't, um, when another person's uh, ambitions don't um, match your expectations for them. So the key here in this particular relationship would have been to practice patience and not let that emotional knee-jerk reaction mark the way that you respond to people. So I'm sure all of you have gone through this in life. Some of you may already may be going through it now where you do have difficult relationships between people that you actually do care about because both parties or maybe just one side has this knee-jerk emotional reaction. So the antidote to that is to have patience, is to practice patience. So I hope that was all clear. If that didn't make sense to any of you, please do ask. If anybody's got any questions, please ask. Otherwise, I'll move on to the next se section of patience. So the next section of patience, I don't see any more, any questions. So I've seen more people come online. Uh, Kinho's online, hello. Chung, the regular, thank you for joining. Martin is here as well. Yinping, Irene, um, good evening. Part is also here, good evening. Uh, JC Go, Joy Cam, uh, Rene Mu is also online. Okay, and I have a question from Ben Kui. What is a good way to catch yourself if you're about to have a knee-jerk reaction? Okay, now for this, which is a very good question, for this, there is no one method that is going to, you know, be a cure-all for the entire thing. The six perfections, even though we're talking about it individually, is they are, they are meant to be practiced um, in conjunction. Everything is supposed to be practiced um, not individually, but as a whole, as a unit kind of thing. So um, this I will actually get back to when I talk about the last session, because the question you've actually asked falls in the last category of practicing patience. So I will get back to your question. The second category of practicing patience is what is known as the patience of accepting suffering. Now this is actually harder to do than the first form of patience. So as the Four Noble Truths actually teaches us, we all go through some form of suffering, whether it is physical, whether it is mental and emotional. We are all we all have it at different periods of our life, different points of life. Even just in one particular day, you can, if you think about it at the end of the day, you have gone through some form of suffering or another. Most likely it is gonna be emotional suffering rather than physical suffering. Now the second part of, the, of practicing patience is to actually accept the fact that you are suffering, that you are going through some form of suffering. But I know, I'm sure everybody knows some people that something bad happens to them and the first thing that they will say, oh, you know, it's my bad karma, I'll just have to deal with it. Or, oh, you know, if, if they believe in God, oh, you know, God must have destined it, so it, it, it's going to happen. Oh, it was just my luck that I, you know, my bad luck for the day. That is not actually 
what is meant by the acceptance of suffering. Okay? The acceptance of suffering is more than that. When you accept suffering, when you have the patience to endure the suffering and at the same time to think, oh, the suffering I'm going through is better that I go through it now rather than I go through it in a later life. I don't want to go through it in a later life because I actually have the motivation and the drive to actually become a Buddha. Because the whole point of Buddhism is to reach Buddhahood. So the whole point is to actually strive to transform yourself to make sure that you reach that place, which is Buddhahood. So when you go through any form of suffering, you actually accept it and you think, oh, it's good that I went through this form of suffering. It can be a small suffering, it can be a large suffering, but you have that patience to accept it and to realize that, good, I have, I have suffered from the effects of my negative karma. My negative karma, therefore, is diminishing. Once it diminishes more and more and more, I can practice more and more Dharma. So that is the patience of um, accepting suffering. Okay? Now... Let's see, I've seen some more people come online. Doreen has come online. And uh, Jerry Go, good evening. And Yo Miao Ki, good evening to you too. So what I'm talking about now, today, sorry, is the um, perfection of patience. So it is the third of the six perfections. And it is, so I've, as with the other perfections, it is categorized into three. So the first one is accepting attacked, being attacked from enemies. The second is the patience of accepting suffering. Now the third one is actually the patience of practicing the Dharma. Now this is a bit more subtle and it is going to be um, again, it is divided into three sections. The first section is actually to remember to remember to practice the Dharma. Okay? Now, you're going to say, but you're telling me to practice patience, but you're telling me to have the patience to practice the Dharma. Yes, it is true. That is, that is what I'm saying. So, the first one is to remember virtue of, these, of, of this category. It is to remember virtue. What does it mean by to remember virtue? Now, here is where I get into answering Ben Kui's question. How do you stop that knee-jerk reaction to um, before you have that and that knee-jerk reaction to somebody who's attacking you? Okay, and the key here is I'm not going to give you a method that is that is will only work one or two times or will only work two or three times. That's, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to tell you like that. There, there's loads of different methods that you can use. What I'm going to tell you is the method that the Lam Rim teaches, which is the ultimate method to help you train in patience. One that will help you in every single instance where it can stop you from having that knee-jerk reaction. And that is to remember your good qualities and the thing that you are striving for. The thing that you are striving for is Buddhahood. And on the way there, you are developing good qualities. And some people, have, people watching this might not even think that they have good qualities, or even if they do, it's very minute. But the thing is that we do. Now, if you're listening to this, and you're listening, and you're, or maybe you're reading more explanations of the six perfections, maybe you want to learn more Dharma, maybe you know a little bit of Dharma and interested in learning more Dharma, that is key. Because when you learn more, you know the benefits of having various virtues, of being a kind person, being a compassionate person, being a wise person. And when you remember, remember these, and when you imprint them again and again and again, and you make it habitual, you turn your habits from being 
very, very self-centered to somebody who focuses out, who focuses on love, who focuses on compassion. That is the key to stopping you from having a knee-jerk reaction when you're attacked. Because you remember your virtue. You remember the virtues that you are, you are learning about. You remember the virtues that you are practicing. You remember the virtues that you are embodying. Okay, that is why Buddhism is not a, you practice, you pray, you're enlightened, you're an angel overnight, you're a saint overnight. It is a pro, it's pro, it's a process. It's a step by step process. That's why the Lam Rim is called the stages on the path to enlightenment. You practice them in stages. Okay, Buddhism is a practice in stages that will lead you to enlightenment. So when you, again, to clarify, when you remember your virtues, when you remember the virtues that you want to embody over and over and over again, okay, that is what will stop you from having a knee-jerk reaction because you know and you have studied and you have understood that if you're patient with another person when they come at you like that, it is better for both you and for the other person because you don't um, further any negative karma. So, uh, Benkui, I hope that answers your question in that one. And another point for that, a lot of the prayers that we actually recite, okay, have certain aspirations aspirational they're called aspirational prayers may i achieve compassion may i achieve wisdom and some of them go into a lot of uh, detail about what it is what is the purpose of reciting these aspirational prayers okay one of the the main purposes is actually to implant the ideas the ideals of these beneficial virtues into your mind stream again and again and again and again and again so that in the future they will actually manifest or because you'll be doing something in daily life and then you remember oh there's this verse in the prayer that i recite that tells me not to get angry so i remember the verse you remembered it okay i'm going to practice patience i'm not going to get angry okay that's also how prayers actually help um us to practice. So even though the prayers are recited on your meditation cushion in front of your altar, okay, the, impl the imprints that are planted in your mind stream are much broader. They have uh, much, uh, a, it's a broader range of implications for our daily life. I hope that made sense. So I have some more comments. <laughs> Joy Kam says we are patiently listening to your story. Yes, please do and have patience until the end of today's session too. Uh, Jerry says, hello, good evening, Pastor Nero. Okay, and Yo Miao Ki also says, good evening, good evening to both of you. Sharon was replying to Ben Kui. She said, learn to meditate with JP Tong on mindful morning meditation and learn to watch our thoughts, as JP puts it. Actually, that is a very good, that is also another method in which that you can develop uh, patience and to catch yourself before you have a knee-jerk reaction. Because when you do practice meditation and have meditative concentration, which is the fifth of the six perfections, which I will also be talking about in another session, that is a good way to help understand how you think, catch your thoughts before you do something um, out of a negative emotional reaction. And Chung has posted a um, posted a part from a sutra. Um, I think from the Deva Saka. No, okay. Okay, you can read it. It is um, actually, Chung, you've put another story in, which is um, a, uh, another example of patience. But this is, um, this is a perfect, great example of 
to, to actually show patients. But this isn't the, the one that I was talking about because the one that I was talking about actually comes from um, another sutra, but perfect. What you've posted is absolutely perfect. And it also shows again that, um, you know, um, that th this particular God was practicing patience. Okay. So let's see. I don't see any more questions. So I'm going to continue. Okay. The second section of, of uh, practicing the patience of the Dharma is to actually, is the patience of changing our behavior. On a day-to-day -day level, I mean, you're listening to me now. You're listening to me talking about patience. You've been listening to me talk about and, and um, explain generosity and discipline. And you're thinking how to put this into daily practice. Maybe after this live streaming and my previous live streamings, you've maybe spent a day and you've, you've kind of been in the situation where, oh yeah, Pastor Nero was talking about having patience. So maybe I should have patience. So then you try it for a day and then, or two days or three days, and then you don't actually see any benefit. You don't see any benefit in the sense that you don't actually see yourself changing. Now, the patience here, where patience comes in is, changing your behavior is something that is what I was talking about before. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And if it does happen overnight, it will take something extremely powerful and extremely impactful for yourself to change your behavior immediately. Changing behavior is a process. And here Buddhism actually teaches that in order to change your behavior positively, you need to be patient. If you're not patient with it, you will give up. If you give up, you have wasted an opportunity to become a better person. So if you are practicing Buddhism, we should practice the patience of changing our behavior day by day by day. When you do that, that is actually how you ultimately become a better person. That is how you transform yourself towards enlightenment. You work on it day by day. So nobody is going to you know, be all compassionate, all wise tomorrow. But tomorrow you might wake up and you might go throughout your day thinking, oh yeah, Pastor Nero was sharing about patience. Maybe I should try and have more patience in my day today. And then the next day after that, you remember patience again. You go about your life, your day-to-day -day life having a little bit more patience. And you build it up. So this is the patience of changing your behavior. And the last section is actually the patience of what is termed as remembering the three jewels. Now this is something extremely important for us, especially when we have been practicing Buddhism for a little while, we've been doing our sadhana, maybe we've, doing, we've been doing a little bit of meditation on the side, maybe we have been going to classes or listening to teachings online. Uh, you might have been listening to my sharings and Pastor David's sharings that we've been doing with all of you. At a certain point, you will probably think to yourself, what, what, how is this actually benefiting me? How have I changed? Maybe I have changed a little bit, but I, and some people notice a little bit of a change in me, but I don't feel like I have changed a lot. Everybody within who practices Buddhism will come to this point, and you will come to this point numerous times in your spiritual path and it's the truth of the matter okay and 
All the masters have said this, even since Buddha Shakyamuni said this, all the masters since have said this. You will come to a time where it's difficult for you to practice the Dharma. You will think that you are going through a lot of obstacles. You will think that you haven't changed. There will be a lot of inner turmoil. Okay? And in fact, Samuel Rinpoche has a very good teaching on this. On, on the inner battle and what it means when, when, when you have this, these thoughts that go through your head. Now, usually what happens is at that point, we think that we want to give up. You want to stop practicing. You want to stop doing your sadhana every day. You want to stop in meditation. You don't want to learn anything more about Buddhism. But Samarim Bhutji actually said, when you reach this point, this is actually a sign that you are practicing the Dharma. What happens at this point is that your negative karma is kind of trying to fight back. It's trying to fight back. It's trying to stop you from, from doing more positive things, from generating more merit, from transforming yourself to be a better person. And it's the force of that negative karma trying to push you away from doing something good that leads you to think in this way. It leads you to think that you haven't transformed. It leads you to think that you are going through suffering. It's suffering to practice the Dharma. I've been doing a hundred prostrations a day and my, my, my legs hurt. I'm not going to do it anymore. Okay. This is a very, very small example, but, but bear with me. When you come to this point, as Rinpoche has said, this is actually a sign that you are practicing the Dharma, that you are actually changing. And the way that Rinpoche said to break through that barrier and to progress and, and to actually uh, go further on your Dharma path, on your path of transformation, is actually to do more Dharma. It is to make more offerings. It is to engage in more purification practices. And it is to force yourself to do more Dharma. And there is a reason behind it. And, that's all, and it's all explained within the Lam Rim. What Rinpoche, every teaching that Rinpoche gave, you can actually find a part in the Lam Rim that explains it. And this is the part that Rinpoche was talking about. It is the patience of um, remembering the three jewels, what is known as the three jewels. So what, what this actually means is that you remember the good qualities of actually practicing the Dharma. You remember the good qualities of making offerings. You remember the good qualities of engaging in purification practices. You remember the good qualities of actually doing your meditation every day, of actually learning the Dharma and bettering yourself. That is what it means by the patience of remembering the three jewels and there is patience involved because when you're at this level and when you have that internal battle that you need to overcome the only thing that will get you through it is patience it's patience in practicing the dharma because as you practice it more and more and more you will overcome that internal battle which as Rinpoche said actually is a good sign it is a sign that you're practicing so even at that instant that you're going through that, that struggle, and even maybe even in this instant when you think you haven't become a better person, actually you have. It might be to a very small degree, but you have. And that is perfect. That is a good sign. Nobody is expecting anybody to be perfect overnight because, as I explained, it is a process. Dharma change, Dharma evolution, spiritual evolution, is a process. Okay, um, let's see who has. I've got some questions. Okay, um, Iman has asked, Hi Pastor Nero, if we tend to be anxious when we have to manage a lot of work in our job with tight deadlines and at the same time being pushed by many people to complete the work for them, is that being impatient? How can we manage that better from the Buddhism perspective? That was a very good question. It's something that a lot of people do go through in life is, is being anxious. Now, the way to, um, to come at this is, okay, there's, there's kind of two forms of anxious. One is an anxious that kind of leads you to actually get your work done good and on time. And there, 
and that kind of anxious in a work environment is kind of, is um, acceptable for a work environment because it is something that you actually do need to do uh, do need to feel sorry to be productive in for most people and on the other hand you have a type of anxious in which it um, overcomes your logical thinking and it basically just eats at you. So even though you know you've got a deadline to, to meet, even though you know, you actually know that you have the ability to meet it, you get so caught up in this feeling of anxiousness that it leads you to either miss your deadline or to do the work in a manner which, you know, isn't your usual standard. It's below standard. So here there's two types of anxious. What I'm going to focus on is the anxious that actually leads you to, um, to not meet your deadline or the anxiousness that eats up at you. This anxiousness, one of the ways to combat this anxiousness is actually breathing meditation. Now, everybody knows that when you're feeling anxious, the, the usual thing that everybody says to you is take a breath, take a minute, relax. Okay, they're not wrong, but I'm going to tell you something more than that. When you practice breathing meditation, because you calm your mind down, you're actually able to see your thoughts um, clearer and it reduces the level of anxiety that people have. There have been loads of research done, there's loads of studies out there and from, you know, from scientists in the East to scientists in the West, they say that things like breathing meditation, mindfulness meditation does actually decrease people's anxiety. And this is something that is noticed across the board. That's why you see a lot of um, in the West meditation has taken off where, you know, people didn't really uh, give it a second thought before and now there's you know all these scientific studies have come out to say that it does have these beneficial qualities and that is why it's being implemented it's been implemented in workplaces all over the west and in the east as well and one of the things it helps is it does help to reduce anxiety so or, or the feeling of anxiousness so that is one of the best ways that i can share with you at this precise moment on how to deal with anxiousness. So this is something that we should actually engage in, okay? From a Buddhist perspective, it's more than just overcoming anxiousness. But when you're starting off with it, when you're starting off with something like breathing meditation, one of the main benefits that it will have is it will help reduce anxiousness. And this meditation, breathing meditation, is not something that you're just supposed to do five minutes every single day, okay? I mean, not just like five minutes and that's it. Actually, you can extend those five minutes into the rest of your daily life. Now, when you, when, so for example, if you're doing the, the, the meditation, the morning meditations with JP, it is a time where you're sitting on your cushion and you're engaged in your breathing meditation and you're doing it. That's perfect. But actually, and then you should continue that because that is part of practice. But throughout the rest of your day, you can actually also engage in mini breathing meditation sessions. Now, this doesn't have to be, when you're doing a mini breathing meditation session, you don't have to sit down and cross your legs. Maybe you can just do it sitting back on a chair. Maybe you have five minutes off and you're, you're sitting at work or maybe even if you're at home, you're sitting on the sofa, just take, just take a quick five minutes and do a breathing meditation. This will actually improve the, the benefits that you can get from breathing meditation, the physical benefits of it, and will actually help you on your spiritual journey, which is something I'll get onto when I talk about the fifth of the perfections. So I hope I answered that que your question. Chung posted uh, the link to the battle is a good sign. And this is the teaching that I was talking about in which Rinpoche, um, Sam Rinpoche was talking about the, the battle that people go through, uh, especially in terms of practicing the Dharma. Luca Trinley said, what do you mean um, beyond the word offerings? Okay, I think maybe I'm talking a little bit too quickly and my accent is throwing people off like it usually does. What I meant is you have the patience to remember the benefits of making offerings. So there are different sorts of offerings that we can make. 
um, the common form that, that we practice is actually things like water offerings and light offerings. Now, each of these offerings has a particular benefit. It has a benefit because in one sense, it will help to purify our negative karma, leading uh, to less suffering for us in the future. And on the other hand, it actually generates the merit for us to achieve a particular quality um, that we need on our way to Buddhahood, on the way to enlightenment. So when you remember the qualities, you remember, the, you have the patience, okay, to remember why you're making the offerings, why you, you're, you're engaging in practices, that, develop, that is a form of practicing patience according to the six perfections. So JC Go says, change from instead having own projection on the incident, think a positive way to look at the incidents from many angles. That, yeah, that is a, um, it's a good thing to do. That can also come about through things like breathing meditation. But again, what, what you have said is, is the practice of patience. Okay. Remember earlier on, I was talking about when you have patience, you don't give, you don't react from a knee-jerk emotional reaction, but you look at things from a different perspective. And earlier on, what I talked about is the perspective of karma. If you react emotionally to, to somebody or a certain situation, you're going to most likely create negative karma for yourself. But also you're allowing the other person to generate negative karma for themselves as well, because you give in to their aggression, you give in to their anger, then you get involved with them, whether it's you know physically fighting them or it's verbally fighting them or even through other actions. So patience is taking a step back and understanding the situation from multiple angles. Irene Lim says, I nearly threw away my sadhana into the river for being a stagnant in self-development when I met Sam Rinpoche, who gave me a boost and encouragement. My good karma ripened. Yep. When we go through, um, we do go through difficult times, when it, especially when it comes to um, our spiritual development, um, because a lot of people actually sugarcoat um, spiritual development and self-transformation, but you actually have to, you have to deal with your inner demons when you want to transform into a better person and this can come in the form of having obstacles it can come in the form of having a lot of emotional reactions for no apparent reason there's many ways that it can happen and if you do practice the dharma and you do have patience in practicing the dharma and encouraging people to practice the dharma when they have when when they're going through these situations you do break through it it's exactly as the teaching that rimji gave and Irene, Irene says her good karma ripened when she met Rimji. Irene, it wasn't your good karma at all. It was your merits. It was your good merits that you, your Rimji was um, there to be able to help you and encourage you to, um, to practice the Dharma. Now, a lot of people, now with this particular story, some people are going to say, but Rimji is not around physically. He's not around physically anymore. And I'm going to say, you okay he's not around physically but what he was what he taught what he embodied is still around he's still around because it's on samrimbuchi.com it is what kacharians practice it is what um the lam room teaches us it is there rimbuchi is still here and he's still around and whoever you are you can still benefit from rimbuchi's teachings because they're there for you you just have to make the effort to go and look and learn and study and change. Luca Trinla says, your English accent is very okay. Thank you. I trained in England with my English accent. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more questions for today. 
hope sometimes I do have problems. Sometimes the not everybody's questions and comments do show up on my screen. So if I've missed your question or your comment, I do apologize. Um, oh, okay, we have a comment. Healing. Remembering the ultimate goal of achieving Buddhahood will cultivate patience. However, there are many times when we think we should achieve more quickly and that's when I become impatient with where I am and where I think I should be. How do I stop this form of impatience? To stop this form of impatience... Okay. When we are practicing, we have certain expect... Because we, we learn about and we hear about these things like people have a lot of patience, people have a lot of discipline, people have a lot of compassion, people have a lot of wisdom, and I'm nowhere near that. When am I going to get there? You have an impatience to see results in your spiritual path, on your spiritual journey. The way to overcome this impatience, <laughs> I'm going to put it bluntly, is to have patience. Okay, this patience, there's two ways to come at this. One, I've already explained earlier, which is to actually have the patience to remember the Dharma. What, what that means is to remember the good qualities of what you're actually doing. Because this impatience that you're having with seeing results in your Dharma path will ultimately actually stop you from practicing the Dharma. You'll be so uh, disheartened by it that your impatience will lead you to stop practicing the Dharma. Now this is something that the Lamrim helps you with and in this case it is to actually remember the benefits of practicing the Dharma. So for example, if you engage in making offerings, if you engage in purification practices, you might not necessarily see the effects of it immediately you might not necessarily realize that you have, you, you've generated merit for something good to happen and you've purified enough karma for something bad to stop happening. You might not realize it, but you know it because you've learned it. And you have the confidence because it comes from enlightened sources that this is what happens when you do these things. You know it, so you keep doing it but you might not necessarily see the effects of it immediately. In the long term, you will, but at that precise moment in time, you won't. This is also the same from practicing the Dharma in daily life, okay? I'm not talking about just making offerings. I'm talking, be, being, I'm talking about, sorry, being a compassionate person, I'm talking about being a loving person. You might not see the effects of this immediately, but you will have to wait to see the effects of it. Because as I said, it's a process. So you know that being a good person is beneficial. What is wrong with being a good person? There is nothing, absolutely 100% zero, nothing wrong with being a good person. And this is what the Dharma path is. It's transforming yourself to be a good person. Now, you become impatient with it. If you become impatient with it, you'll stop yourself from becoming a better person. So you need to be patient because you might not see how you're transforming into a better person right this instant. But the very fact that you are practicing, you're practicing the Dharma, and you should keep practicing the Dharma, means eventually you will reach that point where you will say, oh my God, five years or you know, last year or five years ago, I wouldn't have done this. Today I'm doing this. Maybe I have a little bit of compassion. Maybe, I'm, maybe I am working on compassion. Maybe I am working on wisdom. So it is that the antidote to that impatience is have the patience of understanding what you're practicing is good, that practicing the Dharma is good. So this again is what is known as the patience of remembering the three jewels. So I hope that answered your question. No more questions that I can see. So I will end my session today on the perfection of patience. My next session, which will be next week on Tuesday at 9 p.m., will be the perfection of, sorry, I can never remember them in English. Um, joyous effort will be my, my next session.
I didn't see which. The 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 one that starts with remembering the ultimate goal. I've done that one already. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, it for today. Okay. Just to quick recap. When you practice patience is divided into three sections. One, the first is the patience of dealing with attackers. That means dealing with people from outside attacking, attacking you or testing you in some way. When your perception or your, your way of thinking doesn't match and theirs don't match yours, there will be this tension. There can also be tension between people. This is also covered in um, the patience of dealing with attackers. The second is the patience of accepting suffering. Okay. Um, and the third is the patience of practicing the Dharma. So that is the perfection of patience. So I hope this has been um, a good session for everyone and people have learned a little bit more. Hopefully people are taking what I've been sharing and trying to practice it every day again is not it's not something that you're going to achieve overnight we all have to strive in order to develop these six perfections so thank you very much for joining okay well i have one quick one last question from mr lum to achieve higher levels of rebirth sorry not rebirth to achieve higher levels of patience do we need more merits yes we do and the way to get generate more merits is to practice the Dharma. So the more patience you practice, the more merits you get, which will mean the more patience you have. The more offerings you make, the more you transform your life, the more merits you get, the easier it will get to actually practice these things. Yes, the easier it will be, the easier it will become, excuse my blabbering today, the easier it will become to practice things like the six perfections. Hope that answers your question. Thank you everyone for joining tonight's session. We will be having a session tomorrow as well at 9.30 with Pastor David here on the Kuchara Facebook page. So thank you everyone for joining and good night.